Hey everyone, welcome to Chuck Wagon MTG. Today we bring you a modern deck tech, Pack Rat Fever. This deck was submitted by MTG Color Pie. We will put a link down to their website in the description. Pack Rat Fever is a black green modern build. This deck combines some of the black and green graveyard staples, as we've come to know, as well as a few different yet efficient newcomers that make this deck a lot of fun to play. So let's take a look at our creatures. We have four copies of Bloodgast, a 2-1 vampire spirit for two black mana. Bloodgast cannot block, Bloodgast has haste as long as an opponent has 10 or less life, and Bloodgast has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Bloodgast from your graveyard to the battlefield. We're also running three copies of Veilborn Ghoul, a 4-1 zombie, for four generic and one black mana, Veilborn Ghoul cannot block, and whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Veilborn Ghoul from your graveyard to your hand. We also have two copies of Gravecrawler, a 2-1 zombie creature. For one black mana, Gravecrawler cannot block, and you may cast Gravecrawler from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. We also have two copies of Golgari Brown Scale. He is a 2-3 lizard for 1 generic and 2 green mana. When Golgari Brown Scale is put into your hand from your graveyard, you gain 2 life, and it has Dredge 2. If you would draw a card, you may instead put exactly 2 cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. Otherwise, draw a card. Now, this guy, we are not looking to cast. Just want to put that out there right now. His sole purpose in this deck is simply to be pitched and then brought back uh, to gain life. So, all of the creatures we've named so far are there mainly to be discarded, to help our other creature cards make it onto the battlefield, or to help create some form of board presence. Like Avatar of Discord, which we're running one copy of. Avatar of Discord is a 5-3 Avatar for 3 mana in any combination of red or black. Has flying, and when Avatar of Discord comes into play, sacrifice it unless you discard 2 cards. Next, we have four copies of Lotleth Troll, a 2-1 zombie troll for one black and one green mana. Lotleth Troll has trample, discard a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Lotleth Troll, and pay one black mana and regenerate Lotleth Troll. Now, with this guy in the battlefield, what we can do is we can discard a Bloodgast or two to give him those plus one plus one counters, lay a land for the turn, and then we get to put those Bloodgast back onto the battlefield because of their landfall, and then we're still going to have at least three mana to play spells that turn. So you kind of see how this is starting to come together uh, with the discarding and bringing everything back. Next, we have four copies of Pack Rat. Pack Rat is a rat for one generic and one black mana, and Pack Rat's power and toughness are each equal to the number of rats you control. You can pay two generic and one black mana, discard a card, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of Pack Rat. Now, this is where the deck starts getting really fun. Once we reach mid-game, we can start playing our pack rats and then discarding all the creatures that we mentioned in the beginning of the video uh, to make more copies of pack rat. But the fun doesn't stop there. We have three copies of Parallel Lives, an enchantment for three generic and one green that says if an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. With Parallel Lives out, our pack rats now put out two tokens, and they're getting even bigger with each one. Our last creature, which we're running two copies of, is Disciple of Bolas. Disciple of Bolas is a 2-1 human wizard for 3 generic and 1 black mana. When Disciple of Bolas enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature. You gain X life and draw X cards, where X is that creature's power. So this card is going to help us stabilize and refill our hand, because we want to sacrifice either our Veilborn Ghoul, Avatar of Discord, or one of our pack rack tokens, once they're kind of big, to maximize the gain off of it. 
Another card that we're running that works great with Parallel Lives is Worm Harvest. Worm Harvest is a sorcery for two generic mana and three mana in any combination of black or green. And it says put a 1-1 one, one black and green worm creature token into play for each land card in your graveyard. It has Retrace. You may play this land card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. Now, we're only running one of these because it is in the high end as far as mana costs, but we can keep casting it from our graveyard with its retraceability, and it simply gains value every time we do this. Next, we're running four copies of Thoughtseize, a sorcery for one black mana that says target player reveals his or her hand, you choose a non-land card from it, that player discards that card, and you lose two life. We're going to be using this to remove early game threats before they become threats. And we're also running two copies of Collective Brutality, a sorcery for one generic mana and one black mana that has Escalate, discard a card, and essentially you pay this cost uh, for each choice made beyond the first, and you get to choose one or more depending on how much you escalated. Your options are target opponent reveals his or her hand, you choose an instant or sorcery card from it, that player discards that card, target creature gets negative two, negative two until end of turn, and target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. This is a great toolbox card that can help us both early and late game. Lastly, we have four copies of Fatal Push, an instant spell for one black mana that says destroy target creature if its converted mana cost is two or less. It also has Revolt of destroy that creature if its converted mana cost is four or less. Instead, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. Essentially, these are just here to keep our opponent's board manageable until we can set up our own board state. For our lands, we have four copies of Overgrown Tomb. As Overgrown Tomb comes into play, you may pay two life. If you don't, Overgrown Tomb comes into play tapped. We also have four copies of Verdant Catacombs. Verdant Catacombs says tap, pay one life, sacrifice Verdant Catacombs, and you get to search your library for a swamp or forest card and put it onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. These are going to help us trigger revolt on our fatal pushes as well as helping us with our land. We also have three copies of Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter says tap and add one generic mana to your mana pool. And it has tap, sacrifice Ghost Quarter, destroy target land. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, put it into play, then shuffle his or her library. Essentially, we have these here to interrupt those decks that rely on a certain mana base, such as any kind of Tron deck or those pesky man lands. Then we also have 10 swamps and 3 forests. So our idea here is to control the early game with Thought Seize, Collective Brutality, and Fatal Push. Uh, if you can, you can sneak in for a bit of damage with the Blood Gast or the Grave Crawler, but our main focus is keeping their board state small. Around turn 5 is when we want to start building up our board with Parallel Lives and Pack Rat. Once we have a small rat army, which won't take a whole lot of time at all, we can start swinging away with our huge rats and all of our guys that can just keep coming back from the graveyard. Our sideboard consists of three copies of Abrupt Decay, an instant spell for one black and one green mana that cannot be countered by spells or abilities. Abrupt Decay destroys target non-land permanent with converted mana cost 3 or less. This is going to be for those aggro decks or decks that have non-creature pieces that are needed to form their win con. We have three copies of Big Game Hunter, a 1-1 human rebel assassin for one generic and two black mana. When Big Game Hunter comes into play, destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. It can't be regenerated. It also has Madness, one black mana. So, if you were to discard this card, you can play it for its Madness cost instead of putting it into your graveyard. Now, this guy is going to be great for any kind of deck that's running big creatures, plus his Madness works great with all the discard abilities we have, like with Lotlith Troll and Pack Rat, Collective Brutality, and the casting of Avatar of Discord. So this guy is just kind of a powerhouse all the way around against big creature decks. 
we have three copies of Pithing Needle, an artifact for one generic mana, and as Pithing Needle comes into play, name a card. Activated abilities of the named card can't be played unless they're mana abilities. Now, this is going to help us control some of their win cons, but it's mainly going to be to help against things like Relic of Progenitus and Sentinel Totem, which can be used to exile our graveyards, which in our case is very, very bad. We also have three copies of Sundering Growth, an instant spell for two mana in any combination of green or white that destroys target artifact or enchantment, then populates. So we get to put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature token we already control. We also have three copies of Surgical Extraction, an instant spell for one black Phyrexian mana, which means we can either pay one black mana or we can pay two life for its casting cost. We have to choose target card in a graveyard other than a basic land card, search its owner's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that card, and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Well, that makes up our deck tech. We really hope you enjoyed it. While this may not be a tier 1 deck, it definitely has potential to do well on a local level and definitely your kitchen table. If you happen to play this deck, let us know how you did and what you thought. I would like to give a special thanks to MTG Color Pie for submitting this deck. You can find a link to their website down in the description. Now, if you liked what you saw, do us a favor, click that like button, subscribe, and share us. Share us with your friends, your family, your coworkers, and your pets. Everybody could use a little more magic in their lives. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, ChuckwagonMTG.